Welcome bike to the headquarters. Welcome bike to the channel. We are continuing down our round by round must draft player list. We did rounds one through six last week. That will be linked in the description. The next day we did our all fades list from one to six. So we're going to go bike to bike here and go with seven through 12, or maybe like seven to 10 and then double digit round guys I like. And then the same thing with our fade players for the next two days. We're going to lock this sheesh up for y'all. So I took the Big Dog Bash ADP, which is a relatively sharp ADP right now because it's all people in our audience that have been following and playing fantasy football throughout the entirety of the summer. So we're going off of that. That is super flex ADP, but we kind of cross the quarterbacks out so that the skill position players are in their actual ADPs. Uh, I don't know if that made sense. Um, if you got a big brain, you'll understand what I just said right there. So let's just jump right into round seven after we tuck our shirts in. Y'all thought I fucking forgot. Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. Not at the end of August. Not at the end of August. We don't forget. <laughs> round seven. There's three guys that I love in this round. It's Elijah Moore. It's Dallas Goddard. And it's Damian Pierce. Okay. Dallas Goddard's kind of like the first tight end I'm starting to hone in on as my must draft player. I think... He's going to go nuts with Hurts. I think he's going to end up being like the red zone target there for him and his safety valve over the middle. AJ Brown's getting a lot of work on the outside. I'm sure he'll get a lot of short screen plays, let him do with it, what he may, ball in his hands. But everything out of camp, I mean, this, this Eagles offense is set up to just be so good, right? It's a great offensive line, really good weapons. Uh, Hurts can move the chains one way or another. And supposedly he's just looked fantastic at camp, man. We've seen him preseason. He looked very, 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 very good. And he's done so with Dallas Goddard. So very much in on Goddard. He's the guy that I will be targeting in rounds like seven, eight of drafts. I'm going to probably fade tight end up until that point, unless like Mark Andrews drops around three, then I might pull trig on that. Otherwise we're going Goddard. And then Elijah Moore is just one of my favorite sophomore breakout candidates. Had a great rookie year. Great separator. It's all in there. I think he's going to continue to drop down with the Zach Wilson injury news, but I think Zach Wilson will be, you know, back by week two, week three. I think Joe Flacco will be fine in there for a week or so. Aja Moore, he'll be the one there in New York. Like, listen, you might think Garrett Wilson's more talented, and that might be the case, but not for his rookie year. It's Elijah Moore's team for 2022. Grab him everywhere as your, your first flex, your second flex, your third, fourth wide receiver down here in round seven or eight. And then Damian Pierce, man. Oh, it hurts that he's going this high. And honestly, I tweeted this out earlier today. I think he might get up to like the fourth, fifth rounds of season long drafts. The, the preseason hype has just gone out of control. Last night's game did not help. He got in there with the starters. He got uh, resting starter treatment last week, week two of preseason. While Davis Mills and the starters rested, so did he. Marlon Mack played, Rex Burkhead played, but he got to sit the bench, which is a positive in the preseason if the starting quarterback is also sitting. This week, Davis Mills came out, Damian Pierce came out, six carries, 37 yards, touchdown on the first fucking drive, looked phenomenal, and they sat him for the rest of the game. He is their guy. I will say, though, Rex Burkhead played all of the third and long snaps. I think that's the committee that we're going to see, at least to start the year. Damian Pierce is a very, very good third down player and a very good pass catcher. So he will play a little bit on that, I think. Uh, short yardage, third down stuff he'll be on the field for. But right now, Damian Pierce looks like, uh, I don't even know if it's a dark horse statement at this point, decent bet to lead all rookies in touches this year. He's the starter there in Houston. He's a really, really good player. And depending on where he goes in, round seven is, is exactly where I'd be uh, trying to target him. If he gets into like round four, he's probably off my board. Objectively, he is still in the Houston Texans offense. Objectively, he's going to seed passing work to probably Rex Burkhead. Uh, so I'm not going to go crazy here, but uh, he's moved up into like my RB22, RB23 range right now. And if you're getting him in round seven, you're getting a starter who's going to get a fuckload of touch. So we love him there. When we moved to round eight, I have Rashad Penny and Brandon Ayuk. Rashad Penny's kind of uh, gone up and down this summer, but like every single report was that Rashad Penny is the workhorse here. Everything from April, May, June, July, and then he got dinged up a little bit, left practice, and then Kenneth Walker became the guy there for like five seconds before he had to have hernia surgery. Now, I don't really know what his status is. They're like pretending he might be okay for week one. I don't think he will. My pro I'm just, you know, this is something I say in fantasy. If you guys have been listening to me for a while, you know that something I truly believe in is that you should not be drafting players that are injured going into the year. Like, don't find injuries because they're going to find you in fantasy football. And right now, Kenneth Walker is going to go into the year injured. So you are going out of your way to find an injury here. Uh, and I think Rashad Penny's just, he's going to have too long of a leash to just control that backfield. And Kenneth Walker is going to have to slowly be worked in. And we saw how good Rashad Penny was at the end of last year. Obviously, different team, different makeup, different quarterback. But down in round eight, I think you're going to get a guy who's probably getting 18 to 20 opportunities per game. And there's not much more you could ask for. Ayuk, listen, I'm ready to get fucking hurt again. 
He killed me last year, but everything out of camp is just phenomenal on the kid. Last year, it was the opposite. He was in the doghouse like all summer. I wanted to just push past that and say, I believe in the talent enough. This year, it's all fucking gravy. Everything coming out of there is fireworks. Everything is pointing towards him being a breakout. Everything is pointing towards him being a must draft player. Thus, he's on this list. And I want to give you a quick reminder that our draft guide is live. It is for sale for you guys right now. It's everything that you need for your season long draft. If you don't want to listen to any more podcasts or watch any more videos, this thing will get you fucking zipped up with your tie ready for business come draft night just like that it's all the best content we've made basically organized and neatly packaged for you our rankings our must draft list our all fade list our consistency chart like everything that you need nicely fucking organized for you the easiest and the cheapest way to get it is by going to prizepicks.com or just downloading the app the link will be in the description go to prize picks if you're a first-time depositor Put $10 in there and use promo code BDGE, $10 or more. They're going to double whatever you put down. We're going to be ripping off prize picks plays all summer long, all fall long, all season long. So you might as well get on the platform regardless, but you get the draft guide for free. If you download prize picks, deposit $10, use promo code BDG. Shit is that simple. All right. If you're in a state that's not eligible for prize picks, you can go cop the guide on BDGE.C. Oh, let's move to round nine. We have two wide receivers here. It's Christian Kirk and it's Robert Woods. Christian Kirk is so obviously the wide receiver one there in Jacksonville. I expect Marvin Jones' old age to eventually catch up to him throughout this season. I think Christian Kirk is going to be peppered with targets. He might not be a guy that ever explodes for like 10, 150, and two touchdowns, but I think he'll routinely rip off six to seven catches between 60 and 90 yards and score every other week or so. So I think he's backed into a huge, huge, huge role there. They just gave him the bag. He caught the bag. He's going to catch a lot of passes. Christian Kirk just makes a lot of sense here in a trajectory of an offense where Trevor Lawrence looks to take a step forward. I think they're going to be a lot more pass heavy than they were last year. Uh, I just love everything about Christian Kirk in the ninth round. Robert Woods is kind of like an old injured player version of Christian Kirk. He's in Tennessee. Tennessee has literally no one to throw the ball to. Like Traylon Burks has done nothing but move down and down and down and down draft boards this summer. Kyle Phillips is a really intriguing rookie pick who, you know, I wouldn't even be mad taking later on in the draft. But besides Derrick Henry, they don't have real playmakers there. Like it's literally Nick Westbrook Akini behind Robert Woods on the depth chart right now. He's coming off the ACL, which is why I'm not reaching for a guy like Robert Woods because I don't like drafting players one year removed, but Robert Woods seems to be the clear one and you're getting him in the ninth, 10th round. I'm very much okay with Robert Woods here if you are drafting wide receivers late. When we move into round 10, we have a plethora of rookies and some vets. We got Darrell Henderson, number one. I think that's going to be a clear running back by committee in Los Angeles. You know, a lot of hype has been thrown to Cam Akers because of his profile or whatever, but I've heard, you know, I've listened to a lot of podcasts on the subject and one of the things that continues to ring consistently is the fact that McVay has kind of shifted his mindset from wanting to use one one workhorse to a committee backfield, okay? And Darrell Henderson is getting a lot of run with the ones. I do think that Akers will be the 1A there, but I don't think it's going to be like 70-30. I think it's going to be closer to like 54% of the touches to 46 or 57 to 43. I think Darrell Henderson, even as the 1B, in an offense that's going to score a shit ton of points is going to be valuable enough in round 10 where I'm very much okay drafting Darrell Henderson. Brian Robinson here seems like a really good value right now as he has basically overtaken Antonio Gibson fully as the starter there in Washington. Uh, this entire preseason has pointed towards Antonio Gibson's downfall swiftly, okay? So Brian Robinson is a guy who's big. He can catch passes. He's going to be possibly, probably the goal line where if we've, if we've watched any fucking snaps with the starters this preseason, he's getting the goal line work now too. They can't trust Gibson to not fumble the ball. He's now on kick return. So Brian Robinson in the 10th, 11th round for a starter here. I like the value. I'm not overly excited about the upside, but I do do like the value. I do like the upside of George Pickens, who seems to be running as many snap with the ones as Chase Claypool. I think it's only a matter of time before he takes over that spot. So rather than going Deontay Johnson in round four, go with George Pickens around 10 or 11. Tyler Boyd is always a good value down here in round 10. He's just a guy that's going to have games that are really fucking good for your fantasy team because he's attached to Joe Burrow and this passing offense. He's obviously the clear, clear number three in the passing game. If anything happens to Higgins, if anything happens to uh, Jamar Chase, then it's fucking wheels up for Tyler Boyd. And last year in the games where T. Higgins was injured, there was two games that Boyd played in that Higgins in. Obviously, it's a really small sample size, but it just feels kind of like a common sense sample size. Higgins was out. Tyler Boyd went six targets, four catches, 36 yards, touchdown. The next game, 11 targets, nine catches, 118 yards. So he's just going to be very heavily involved in this offense if anything were to happen to the top two. But he'll still rip off a bunch of like five for 60 and touchdown games just being in this offense. So throwing him in as your flex one, flex two or whatever, you're going to feel okay about Boyd. Now that we're in like round 11, it's you know, ADP is kind of out the door. Um, so it's not anyone that you must draft because everyone's getting faded at this point. But one dude that I've really, really been moving up my rankings and probably going to bite me in the ass is Marquez Valdez-Scantling in Kansas City. So I've watched every snap from the starters in KC. 
see. And it's very, two things are very clear that MVS is going to be a big part of this offense and he is the wide receiver two or one. Him and Juju, anytime Juju's been missing most of the preseason because he's dealing with a lower body injury, but MVS is out there for every single snap with Patrick Mahomes. He's the clear second starter in this offense. And it's weird. It feels like every non Kelsey target is like a safety blanket throw to MVS. He seems to be the guy that Mahomes is really starting to trust with a lot of these targets. All these other guys, they're up in the air, right? Juju, MVS, McCole Hardman's the three. Sky Moore is like the four or five right now, which is getting kind of ugly. Justin Watson's a little bit involved, but MVS seems to be a clear starter in this offense. And rather than take Juju in round like five or six where he's going right now, I would much I wouldn't be surprised if MVS actually outproduces Juju in multiple statistical categories, including fantasy points this year. Give me the five or six round discount. And in the, almost the exact same mindset with Isaiah Pacheco, the rookie running back for KC. And I, tr- I also tweeted this out earlier today. Like the way I'm looking at the Kansas City backfield is this. There's not a single KC running back that I wouldn't draft, but there's not a single KC running back I would draft in the single digit rounds, which means based on ADP, I wouldn't draft CEH where he's going. Jarek McKinnon is a guy that I kind of want to have some shares of. I think he's going to be a player. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco is also a dude that I will take. You know, Both of those guys are going rounds 11, 12, 13, 14, depending on what kind of league you're in. Both of them, the way this this backfield is broken up is like Clyde continues to get the starts, but he continues to get the least valuable touches. He's only getting touches in between the 20s on early downs. Every third down snap has gone to Jarek McKinnon with the starters. He is the third down back. Isaiah Pacheco is getting a lot of run in the red zone, on the goal line. The valuable touches are not going to Clyde. And it caps the upside of everybody in this offense. So give me the cheaper of all the unknowns, which is kind of the way I'm looking at MVS as well. Starting to like Kenny Gainwell more and more because Miles Sanders, again, is missing more practice with a hamstring injury. This dude has just missed so much time, whether it's game time, practice time. I don't want to draft players that are injured at the end of the summer because that means they're probably going to the season at less than 100%. And if you step on the fucking field at less than 100% with guys who are 100%, you are 100% more likely to get hurt. All right. Again, don't find injuries because they're going to find you and that'll pretty much wrap up like the round seven through 10 11 12 ish obviously there are guys later on in drafts you know i like isaiah mckenzie i kind of like in one quarterback leagues the value of the dudes like justin herbert and mahomes in the fifth round jalen hurts in the sixth seventh round and then when we get down to like Kirk cousins area i really like him there so depending on where those guys go those would probably be my targets at quarterback but it's dallas goddard at tight end every fucking time in the seventh or eighth round you will thank me at the end of the year for that all right that's all i got for you today make sure you go deposit on prize picks to go get that season long draft guide and get that 100 deposit match subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the thumbs up button if you didn't hate the video and i will see y'all tomorrow on this version of the video for the fade list and make sure you go watch rounds one through six if you didn't already all right i love you